Bingo. <laughs> four o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is our flagship energy show at 4 p.m. every Wednesday. Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And my co-host is Sharon Moriwaki, the co-chair of the Hawaii Energy <laughs> Policy Forum. Aloha. Aloha, Sharon. And our special, specially honored guest <laughs> is Dave Bissell. He is the CEO of Kauai Island Utility Co-op which is K-I-U-C. And if you don't know that at the end of this show, you'll know how fabulous they are. <laughs> <laughs> the future is now with K-I-U-C and David Bissell. Fabulous. So we're going to talk to you, Dave, about what's going on over there. You've got some great initiatives going on. You are showing the way uh, to solar with storage, Dave. a combination, a marriage of these great technologies happening on Kauai. That's correct, Jay. Thank you, and thank you, <laughs> I knew you'd say for that. having me here today. It's always so a pleasure. You, to yeah, the future is now in Kauai. Here. And uh, yeah, we're excited about what's happening on Kauai. Uh, we've got a good strategic plan uh, that our elected board of directors puts together. A lot of the success of KIUC in the Kauai utility is from our board of directors laying a good groundwork that we take out to the community, get buy-in on where we're going, and then it's up to me and my staff to go make it happen and deliver on the, deliver on the plan. And, and in the co-op, the board of directors, that's the people. That's right. Mm -hmm. Board of directors, we got nine directors. Uh, three are up for election each year. They're elected by everybody that's a mm -hmm. member of KIUC. We have members, not customers. Each one gets a vote, and they vote a third in each time. So there's a direct connection to the people, the actual rate payers and members. So ultimately, they got to be happy, or the board of directors, will be changed out and management will be changed out. So it's a direct touch from the, from the people down to me and down to my staff. So point is, it's working. Yeah. This is a co-op that is actually working, working well. You guys are really doing a good job getting where you have to go in this you know, form of doing business. And you said that the strategic plan was just adopted by the board. So, so how did that go? I mean, did, was it a year-long process or where, where probably, are you now? It, it took about six months, and that involved, we, we had a good plan that originally had us at the 50% target on Kauai, and that started off being really aggressive. When, when that came out in 2008, mm -hmm. nobody really knew how we were going to get there. We were about 8% renewable at the time, and wow. the yeah. board stepped up and said, let's move it to 50%. And <laughs> now we've, we're proud and pleased that we've reach 50% either with projects that are done or in front of the PUC right now. So we've got to the 50% and the board went in, looked at it again and said, well, that's not good enough. We're going to move it to 70%. Let's go through your slides. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have a slideshow now. Slideshow! <laughs> <laughs> so I talked a little bit about this, but just where we're sitting relative to our goals. And one of the big areas when you're trying to talk about renewable percentages is how much your sales are going to grow. The more sales grow, the harder it is to meet them. Mm -hmm. And sales are starting to grow on Kauai. I think they are on the other islands as well a little bit. But with 1% sales growth uh, in the current projects we have we'll hit 47 percent uh, supply side renewable energy when complete that's mm. before the AES yeah. solar project but after the Tesla what does supply side mean supply side means generation that's a generation side and that so that has the 47 percent has the Tesla solar city dispatchable solar project is going to go online soon it should be exporting power maybe as early as Tomorrow wow. or the next day. Wow, wow. Power, so. And you're here with us. That's right. Wow. I want to stay away when they start playing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll be, uh, it's starting to go, oh. and within a month or so, it should be at full commercial operations. How exciting is that? I didn't know it was just going to happen. That's very exciting. You it's just signed right it last now. Friday, yeah. yeah? No, 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 no. That's, the, PBA the, that's the Tesla Solar City one we signed oh. last November, so it's still oh. remarkable. Well, oh. November of 20. 15 we signed so it's still pretty remarkable oh, a little over a year yeah. year and three months so what's the ppa you just signed on friday was it you signed no we signed the ppa last oh was it last it was, november no it was a new year's eve signing i remember oh. that clearly because we were pushing to get it signing. done last year it was a gift yes a gift, <laughs> for the, a gift heading into the new year but it, it was a push and the staff and i and our, our team we pushed hard and this was with aes distributed energy oh. and they were pushing hard to make that project happen and get it signed by the end of the year that's a, a big project it's 20 megawatts by five hours of battery storage so 100 megawatt hours of storage a day mm -hmm. uh, almost double what the solar city tesla one is that's that's a 13 megawatts ac solar by four hours so 52 megawatt hours a day so 
another hour of battery and bigger size. So we keep moving on our well on our way to mm -hmm. being a, continuing to be a leader in the distributed batteries and distributed solar. Can we unpack that a little bit? 20, 20 megawatts is what percentage of your total use on, on Kauai? That'll be about pushing 10 to 10, 11 percent. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Tesla one that's going online is about 5 percent. Ah, okay. So, you knock it off in blocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and uh, AES, who is AES? It's AES Distributed Solar. That's a, a subsidiary of AES, uh, the company that has the coal plant here, and mm. it's a big worldwide yeah. company. So mm -hmm. that's one of their their their. They're a big energy company all over the place. Big company all throughout the world. Yeah. And, uh, turning into a leader in, in uh, distributed energy. Mm. And, they're, and they're putting in the solar, uh, that is the solar panels, as well as uh, the uh, Tesla batteries, both. Nope, we got, a, we got two projects, Tesla Solar City yeah. and AES. AES will be sourcing their own batteries. Okay. So AES is the, mm. is the upcoming project. Tesla is the one that's going to oh. go online okay. as early yeah, as tomorrow. So many projects. <laughs> oh, wow. It's hard to keep track. It's yeah, a good problem to have. Yeah. So yeah. Where, is the, where is the new one? That you, where are they both, actually? The first project oh, is... Do you want to show us a picture of them? Or do you have I, I don't have oh, a picture okay. of it. It's, it's by our existing Kapaya plant. It ties right into the switch yard there, so it's a real efficient location. Mm -hmm. It's on Grove farm land oh. there. And we've the been there, Sharon. Yeah, we, yeah, we've there, been there. That was yeah. where the, uh, yeah, the algae, algae, algae yep, it's farm just, it's was. It's probably yeah. a quarter mile from Yeah, right there. across the way. And the second project is going to be on the south shore of Kauai. Um, we haven't announced the exact location yet because they're still doing some final paperwork on uh -huh. it, but it's going to be a nice sunny site, a good location. They're all former sugarcane mm -hmm. land. And mm -hmm. On Kauai, that's one of the advantages we have is a lot of um, former plantation land is available. It's uh, relatively cheap to convert mm -hmm. over to renewable energies and projects, so it helps helps make them happen. And it's a good, you know, we can't do these projects without cooperation from the big landowners on Kauai. Sure. We've been lucky about that. They, they've been supportive. Um, by the time we're done, I think we'll have done projects with all of them. Uh, Grove Farm, A&B, mm -hmm. uh, Gay and Robinson, so all the old sugar through, guys. Yeah. Well, how does that work? Do they lease you the land? Yes. So, so, oh, yeah. I see. Hmm. And even uh, a nice the state partnership through, then. even the state through DHHL, where our on a whole one is. So, so it sounds like you're you're on a path of um, doing utility scale, or at least KIUC utility scale of solar. Uh, combined with batteries all over the island in sufficient, um, you know, output to, to reach 100% ultimately, yeah? Conceivably, we could get there. We're starting to see a path. Um, it, we need to emphasize that this is still a relatively new technology. Uh, the Solar City one's going to be the first utility scale one anywhere going into service. So we got to make sure they work well, that the batteries live up to their expectations. And because if the batteries don't work as well as planned over a 20 to 25 year period, the costs are going to go up on future ones. Yeah. So they got to work. We're, we're optimistic they will, but it's got to be proven out. But what I like about this is that you're, you're willing to take a risk. Not only are you willing to take a risk, but all of Kauai, all your members are willing to take that risk. Well, it's a, it's a very measured risk for us on distributed solar because we own two large solar plants on, on Kauai, 20, 24 megawatts, the Anahola and the Kaloa one that were built about a year, hmm. year apart mm -hmm. from each other and are in service now. And we have some batteries with those. Uh, Six megawatts lithium ion at uh, Anahola, and about six megawatts of advanced lead acid ones at the other uh, serving the other project. So we've got a lot of batteries, but that's all for frequency control. Mm. Mm. Um, that's not the overnight kind. Mm. That's right. And and the point is here, we own solar projects, traditional solar projects that are very low risk. Uh, it's high capital cost, but low risk. We do not own the these next two projects coming online with the batteries because we did not want to They're subject our members to that yeah. Right, risk. so it actually moderates the risk That's if right. that happens. But let me ask you this, you know, it's a math question. Okay, uh -oh. ready for a math <laughs> question? Well, energy is technology and technology is math. There you go. But you said that one of these projects is four hours of, of uh, storage and the other is five hours of storage. Right. Now, what I get is either four or five is less than the dark hours in the day. That's so right. how does that work? when the batteries run out at three in the morning? Well, you, we, the way these projects work is they have five hours times 20, but it does not have to come out over a five hour period. 
They can come out over a 10 hour period, 15 hour period. So what it's doing is it'll help originally shave the peak. And I think we have a slide. Yes, right there showing how it'll look like. This is KIUC's uh, dispatch starting at midnight going through till 11.59 at night. And down at the bottom is the blue part. That's our, our uh, legacy hydro projects. Mm -hmm. The green is the green energy biomass plant. Mm -hmm. And those are absolutely flat. Flat. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, I mean, hydro moves a little bit, but all in all flat. Uh, on top of that is our remaining conventional generation that a few years ago, used to fill the rest of the uh, <laughs> right. mm -hmm. mark there. And all, all that yellow is solar. Mm -hmm. And the big, big news out of these projects is instead of having the solar, the yellow, all being over a four or five hour period, mm -hmm. we are now moving Logic. into our morning mm -hmm. and afternoon peak with the batteries. Mm -hmm. So you can see we're starting to smooth mm -hmm. out our conventional generation. And as we do more of these projects, it'll get smaller and smaller so that conventional generation may look more like the hydro mm -hmm. or the biomass, a fairly mm -hmm. flat. Stable. But yeah. there's still quite a bit of, you can see there's still quite a bit of uh, black or brown there, the conventional generation to fill as we do more projects. But mm -hmm. you can see you can get there. Where are the darkness hours? I can't tell from the Starts, chart. The, the peak, our peak is right about uh, 7 o'clock, 7 mm -hmm. to 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so solar comes in uh, very strongly between, say, 11 and 2 or 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then it, it drops off quite a bit in the shoulder period. So during this, the, the peak time, it'll be feeding the batteries. Mm -hmm. And as the, as the sun goes down later on in the day, we'll start exporting out of the batteries where we would normally be hitting our peak using conventional generation. We'll be using it with energy from the battery. So it's really, our peak will be pr uh, powered by the sun. Yeah. And at 2 in the morning, people are asleep anyway. They, yeah. they don't have the lights on. <laughs> Most people are. <laughs> Most people, yeah. People still like some uh, electricity. <laughs> yeah. They don't like their... But, but not a lot, right? It's not the same thing as when they no, get home from down work. Quite a bit. Drop that's down. Right. Yeah. That's right. The other thing I wanted to ask is, these are these all connected? I mean, to like with sound over here in our studio, all the sound goes into one mixer, and the mixer distributes it wherever we've got to go. And the mixer is smart uh, most of the time. <laughs> but what, what happens here? Does all these plants go to a central repository and then to be distributed, or they get distributed without going to a central repository? No, that, that, that's a good question. The central repository, big words, uh, is... Uh, <laughs> What, what most people refer to is the electrical grid and everything that goes into the grid gets spread amongst the entire grid so that that's really the, the keeper of all the energy that goes in and it's, it's our job to balance the how much we have to put in the production of it to, to exactly meet the usage of it all, all, during all the hours of the day mm -hmm. and it's one of the nice parts of a grid that people tend to take for granted is if it's nighttime and you want to use more you want to use less it's going to be there. You don't have to go out and fire up a generator or go adjust your usage because you don't have enough capacity for it. We're doing that for you. Yeah. And it's a, it's a heck of a convenience. And that takes us to uh, the next question. And the next question, right after this break, is exactly how do you do that, Dave? We're going to take this break. Dave's going to think about that. <laughs> we'll come back. You're going to answer the question. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Aloha, Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 in the afternoon. Do not tune in in the morning. My topic is energy efficiency. It sounds dry as heck, but it's not. We're paying $5 billion a year for imported oil. My job is to shave that, shave that, shave that down in homes and buildings while delivering better comfort, better light, better air conditioning, better everything. So if you're interested in your future, you'd better tune in to me. Three o'clock every other Monday, code green, aloha, and thank you very much. Okay, we're back. We're live with Dave Bissell, my co my co-host uh, Sharon Moriwaki. I'm going to call you co-chair. My co-chair, <laughs> co-host Sharon Moriwaki, uh, and Dave and, and us. We're talking about uh, what's happening on Kauai, all the um, amazing projects and uh, PPAs they got going there. Um, and one of the things is is uh, is the the grid. 
and how you do it. We can learn from you. We can learn from you. I think you're you know, an exporter of uh, best practice is what you are. Um, and so the question is, how do you manage the grid uh, so that you know the demand, that you know, you know how to supply all that demand? And what kind of black boxes are in use? Who's putting them in? How advanced are they? And what do you see in the future? That's a multiple compound question. <laughs> and you can answer it by saying, it depends. <laughs> Let me, I'll answer it a slightly different. We've got an awful lot of, well, not an awful lot, but a lot of very smart engineers at KIUC. And through, every electric utility has that. And that's what those guys get go to school for. That's what they get paid a lot of money to uh, yeah. To do it's technical and it's a mix of KIUC engineers. It's the engineering staff of the uh, developers, AES and Tesla. A lot of real high-level, cutting-edge technology these guys are implementing and working together. It's a it's a partnership, a true partnership between KIUC and the developers. They set the controls for these projects, um, and they're really. This is the first place it's being done, so it's it's kind of being made up that's as it goes exciting. along. Yeah, that's yeah. the amazing yeah. thing. Yeah. So can we break it down a little bit, like in schematic? So on the utility side, you're going to want to know what people what people are asking for, and you want to know what you have to give them, and you want to match that. How do you do that? What kind of boxes, and where are the boxes? That's what our control room operators do that are out in a power plant. They sit there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, managing it's the... one control room. One control room, essentially. Well, no, it's out of Port Allen at our power plant, okay. big power plant. And these guys sit there, and that's their job to, to make sure that it all balances out. And it's not all manual. A lot, the vast majority of it's automatic through controls that are set up. But mm -hmm. there's somebody sitting there making sure if something goes wrong or the, if, the, if the load is getting too low, that they're firing up more generators or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, And they're seeing everything. They see right the whole the, system. You know, the, yeah. the, the bio, what do you call it, the bio fuel to... Yeah. Uh, the 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 high 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 what do you call it um, high, high, high hydro, hydro. Uh, we've seen that Sharon mm -hmm. and I have seen yeah, that yeah, we um, saw to hydro the plant. solar to everything you've got it's all there in Port Allen yeah yeah they're sitting there basically looking at a computer screen that's got all those all the uh, generation we have showing where they're at what levels they are how much uh, extra capacity there is so-called spinning reserve if it moves up because it's got to be instantaneous. So, and then the batteries are there also. Mm. Batteries are super fast response, so the control room, the, the generators move relatively slowly, matter of seconds, but the batteries move in matters so of fractions. It's actually of easier with batteries to, yes, to yes. do demand response. Huh? Well, and it's, it, it's easier in a lot of ways that the batteries are a great system resource, the build, that they're sitting there kind of, and this is all based on controls set to the batteries, how they respond if there's a, if there's a fault in our system, if a car hits a mm. utility pole and it causes sure, a fault, sure. those batteries are automatically responding. Mm. Ah. So ah. Our, our system may not even blink anymore if there's a, 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 a line fault. Mm. Where in the past, wow. conceivably, we were shedding load because the generators couldn't respond fast enough. So, wow, because the battery just kicks in. Yep. Well, that's fabulous. Wow. But that means you have to have a lot of data coming in all the time. You have, to, you have to have sensors or somebody sending you data about all the elements of the system coming into Port Allen, right? That's correct. How do you do that? Well, it's a combination of our smart meters can get down to the actual residential level, and there's an awful lot of uh, controls and set out at the substations that that send uh, information back to the, the, the control room and the screens that the operators are looking at. So it's all hmm. down to a circuit by circuit level. They can see see what's happening on, on our grid. Mm -hmm. you say that now you, I think we need yeah. to move off this. Or I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, when you say AES is doing some of this, Dave, is that so that they're helping you develop the software and, and then it'll be kind of like operated then by your staff? In the both long run, or both AES that? and Tesla is they're setting up their controls for their system. They're their system but our guys operate them. The only requirement is we have to take all that it produces every day and we have to run the battery out every night. So our mm -hmm. guys within that have complete, well not complete, but pretty complete uh, ability to dispatch the batteries in the system mm -hmm. as they see fit, subject to some operating constraints. And all of that is ready to roll or is rolling? It'll be rolling. It'll take oh. some tweaking, but oh. it'll be coming out. So you expect that. Yep. After all, we're, we're doing, you know, very advanced things. You say run the batteries out. You mean run them, run them you know, to empty, do you? Yep. Well, it's based the that's one of the things that the developers, the AES and the Tesla control, they say how far down they can run, but essentially they set a floor, but to us that's that's empty. Yeah, sure. That's very interesting. So and and that's healthy for batteries, isn't it? You want to do that. 
Well, they we you don't want to run batteries too much all the way down and up or too low. But mm -hmm. within those within those controls, we you know we're paying money through these PPAs to have this the the uh, PV generated energy go into those batteries and be able to bring it back out at night. So we want to use as those as much as we can. Mm. Yeah, and that's the most efficient use of sure, those PV sure. fields. And you know, got to think about the economics, but the economics are, are pretty good on this last PPA because it gives you eleven cents a kilo. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, terrifically that's pretty good. good. <laughs> They're really good on both. We thought the thirteen point nine cents we got uh, with yeah. the Tesla one was, and then you was very it. solid, and then it <laughs> yeah. got better. So that, that's an indication of one bigger projects get a little cheaper uh, movement and battery pricing from them, and it's it's an aggressive wow. market right now. You know, the there's a few few uh, large providers, Tesla, Solar City, um, one uh, AES, another. Mm -hmm. and there's a there's probably another ten or so that are fighting yeah. to be the leaders in this. Yeah. So there's a wow. lot of interest. Uh, but you know, we've been talking about utility scale. I mean, Fort Kauai. Mm -hmm. What about you know the homeowner? Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, you know the rooftop? Um, how is how are things moving on the rooftop? Do you have the same kind of uh, dramatic increase going on there? No, not on Kauai, and I don't. I don't think on the other islands as well. That one, that technology is more expensive, and it's just not is readily deployable. Right in today's time, uh, the bad. I think uh, overall distributed both the PV and the batteries end up being two, two and a half times more expensive than the utility oh, scale side. So this is a big yeah. lesson, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it is. <laughs> you're here to say really that utility scale solar is is the future. And uh, it's, it's so much cheaper, more efficient than roof by roof by, by roof. I, I think so. I mean, we got to see how technology evolves. There's a chance that the there's the breakthroughs on, on the smaller side and the pricing drops radically. It's helped, happened with PV projects, but every time on the distributed side, that's dropped. We've dropped, the larger ones have dropped equally, and the utility scale side have fairly consistently stayed about half the price. Mm -hmm. So from a capital deployment, Overall, to me, it makes a lot of sense to put it where the mm -hmm. the price mm -hmm. is the cheapest, and if it's half the price, that seems like a good investment. So, what's the secret sauce, Dave? We're about out of time, you know. And uh, some people say it's your looks. Yeah, but I think that's, that's <laughs> some people say it's your personality. Oh, yeah. But things are working well in yeah. in Kauai. What what is the secret sauce we should take note of? There's no secret sauce. We've got a a really good team. We've been working for years to develop this team and to develop our approach, and it's evolved from doing our own projects, relatively small ones to bigger ones, to going out and, and working within the industry and the marketplace to to make these deals happen. So we've got a real good team. We've got real good engineers, good financial people, good consultants who have helped us on this, and it, it means a lot to the development community, whether we're buying it from them or doing uh, they're selling to us through a, a project that KIUC would own. They know we can execute. Uh, and make deals. You can make deals, get it done. That's yeah. really a statement. It means a lot to them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sharon, it's time for you to wrap up, summarize, oh, <laughs> and, and tell oh, people yeah. what we learned here today. I think we learned a lot. I think we learned that if you have a good team together, that you execute on what you say you're going to do. I think that that really is the major first step of doing anything. And we really want to hear more about what you're doing, Dave, as we go along. But it's very exciting to hear pushing them. I just wanted to know how how scared were you when you said we're going to go from 8% to 50%? What, what were you thinking when they said do it, just do it? Well, uh, that's one of the things we, we, I work really closely with my engineering team and it, it's a lot of it's a testament to them that they've been willing to push the, the envelope. I'm a financial guy and I'm more willing to say, hey, why can't we do this? And the good thing with my engineers is they say, why not? Mm. Let's, let's try to make this happen. We can make it happen. You know, go do these things within constraints, and, and we'll make it work, as opposed to saying, no, 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 you can't do this. It's impossible. Yeah. And, and we couldn't, and it's a part of our relatively small team that the engineers work directly mm. on the projects to make it happen. It's not a, a, a separate group, a separate Mm -hmm. uh, side oh, trying to make team. things. Yeah. The engineers yeah. are part of it, so it, it, everything works together yes. well, and I, th I think that's a big part on, on being a development oriented uh, company. Good lessons learned, yeah, good and lessons uh, learned. come back to tell us more. Come back to Thank tell you us so much, more. Dave Thanks. Bissell, Thanks. CEO of KIUC. Great Aloha. to have you here, man. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha.